Hello everybody, we are back and we are in a very, very important subject on chapter 21 of cost, volume, profit analysis. I was talking to some of the students beforehand and uh, you should think of accounting kind of like uh, getting a suntan. Uh, it's a lot better if you do it a little bit every day as opposed to try to do it in one chunk, okay? Um, if you just take, even on the days if that, if that you don't have written homework, if you just take 10 or 15 minutes to review what you've done, go over it in your brain, uh, you will be surprised how much easier it is when it comes time to take the test. I have too many people that uh, they don't do their homework and then the night before the test they try to do like three hours marathon, three or four hour marathon if not longer. And that just is kind of like trying to get your suntan on one day. You end up getting a sunburn, okay? So uh, a little bit every day. Uh, has anybody ever taken music lessons like piano lessons or guitar lessons or anything like that? Okay, I, I've taken guitar lessons and he says it's so much better to practice like 20 minutes every day as opposed to two hours one day, okay? So you guys are getting far enough along in your uh, accounting uh, education, in your college education where uh, you need to start developing really good study habits. So I want you guys to start working on that. Make sure you're doing this homework because it's really important, all right? Let's go ahead and take a look at the homework. Before we do, I want to remind you on those, that chapter 20 project, you folks at home, um, I won't go through the whole explanation again, but there's three ways you can hand that or get that to me. Uh, but make sure you're doing that. Make sure you're checking the calendar on D2L as far as the last day that is due. I don't want you to miss out on those points, okay? All right, let's take a look at um, Quick Study 21.3. Quick Study 21.3, all right? Okie doke. Quick Study 21.3. Um, the following information is available for a company's maintenance costs over the last seven months. Using the high-low method, estimate both the fixed and the variable components of maintenance costs. Okay, the first thing that I always do, first of all, is identify which of these variables is the X and which of these variables is the Y. Which of these variables is the X? Maintenance hours. Maintenance hours is X, and this is Y, correct? Now, once you've uh, identified the X and the Y, cover up the Ys and choose which one of these is your low X and which one of these is your high X. Which of these is low? December. That's our low, right? Is December. And which of these is our high? November. November. Okay, good. All right. So, we are going to use both the X and the Y for the high and the low as we do this, okay? So, take a look at that data while we go through it, and let's solve this, all right? Okay, the first thing that we have to do is recognize that we are trying to solve this uh, in the manner of Y equals A plus B times X. That's the cost of a mixed line, right? Okay, the first thing we're going to solve for is B, the variable cost per unit. So B is going to equal the change in Y divided by the change in X of the high and the low points. So that equals, let me switch pens, um, $8,100 minus $3,600, is that correct? Divided by... 24 minus 6, is that correct? And does that come out to $250 a maintenance hour or $250 a unit? Okay. Actually, let's go ahead and that's $250 a maintenance hour. Okay. So that is our B, isn't it? Okay. Questions there? Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the y equals a plus bx, and we want to solve for a, which is the fixed cost. Okay, well, we're gonna, we, we solved for b, b equals $250 times x. Now we're gonna borrow the y and the x 
from either the high or the low set of data. Okay? I usually pick the low because it's easier math. Uh, the low, what is the y at the low point? How much? $3,600. And what is x at the low? X. Six. Okay, so 3,600 now equals A plus 6 times 250 is 1,500. So A equals $2,100, right? Is that correct? Okay. Now, we have solved for this. Now, you could write this like y equals $2,100 plus 250x. You could do that, but that's kind of the mm, not too thrilled look, okay? I like to define it for this problem. What does y equal in this problem? What does y equal? Total cost. It equals, and more specifically, maintenance costs, right? Total maintenance costs. So let's say total maintenance costs equals $2,100 plus, and what does uh, x equal in this? Number of hours worked. Maintenance hours, okay, equals $250 per maintenance hour times the number of maintenance hours, okay? That gives me a warm fuzzy in my tummy that you know what you're doing, okay? And I think that is helpful for people because they can look at that and truly understand a lot more than just looking at this. Does that make sense? Because now what you can do is you can plug in estimated numbers of maintenance hours and you can estimate your total maintenance costs. Is that correct? All right, questions on that? Good, that was the high-low method. Now let's do exercise 21-9, is that correct? Exercise 21-9. Okay, let's take a look at it. Right here, a jeans maker is de designing a new line of jeans called the Slims. Hmm, the Slims, it's like skinny jeans, right? Should I get pairs of skinny jeans? Should I wear a pair of skinny jeans? Yeah. Okay. The jeans will sell for $205 per pair. I'm not getting the Slims, okay? <laughs> that is more than I pay for my jeans. The jeans will sell for $205 per pair, and they cost $164 per pair in variable costs to make. Compute the CM per unit, the CM ratio, and describe what the CM ratio reveals about this new jeans line. Um, well, this is pretty straightforward, okay? Uh, not a lot to say about this except the answer, which is the contribution margin is uh, 141 per unit. This, or thank you. 41 per unit, thank you for restating that. 205 minus 64, the CM uh, is $41 per unit. The CM ratio is your CM divided by your sales price. 41 divided by 205 equals 20%. What does that mean when we say we have a contribution margin ratio of 20%? Well, what it, it says is that for every dollar in sales, 20% of that goes to covering fixed costs and hopefully eventually to provide profit, okay? Your CM per unit and your CM ratio are very, very, very important numbers, as we've talked about, okay? Cool? All right, questions on that? Anybody? I know we have a couple handouts to go over. Um, before we go over those handouts, let me do just a little refresher here, okay? and take a look at the computer. Well, let's even back up a little bit. Let's do a little bit more refresher. We talked about how there is the traditional approach to doing an income statement, and this is used for external reporting. 
that sort of method is going to arrive at gross margin right there. And it's going to be sales minus your cost of goods sold uh, equals gross margin. And then we subtract out our operating expenses and that equals net income. Okay. But we have introduced uh, lately this contribution approach. Okay. And this is just so important. So important. This is where we organize costs by behavior. We take our sales and then we subtract all of our variable costs regardless of whether they're product or period. And we arrive at this number called contribution margin. Then we subtract all of our fixed costs regardless of whether they're product or period. And then we arrive at net income. Now this method is much more useful for management. Okay, much, much more useful for management. And I think I also told you that whenever I look at an income statement, the first thing I do is go to the middle to see if it's gross margin or if it's contribution margin so that I know which method that they prepared it in. Okay? Now we, we built on this and here's another uh, contribution income statement. And we talked about how we like to do the, the per units for sales, variable costs, and CM. Okay? Don't do them down here. Okay? Just do the CMs for CM per unit for sales revenue minus variable cost equals contribution margin. Okay? Now, this is for 2,000 units, and a lot of times I'll just write that above the, to the total. Okay? Now, I also talked about how if I give you this data and this data, you can figure up this data, can't you? Or if instead I give you this data and this data, you can figure up this data, correct? And I want you to be very adept at navigating a contribution margin, uh, contribution format income statement. And then of course we talked about what the contribution margin uh, ratio is, which is your CM divided by your sales, okay? With that knowledge, let's do the uh, handouts that I assigned. Let's go ahead and do, uh, let's do Lorenzo the Lorenzo handout first, okay? The Lorenzo handout first, all right? Now, below is the contribution margin income statement for Lorenzo Company for the month of March. Okay, I can see the totals here, and this is for 13,000 units. So the first thing that I wanna do is write out my per units right here, okay? My per units. If I take uh, 1 million 40,000 divided by 13,000, what do you get? 80? 80? Good. $80 even. If I take 852,800 divided by 13,000, I get 6560, is that correct? If I take 187,200 divided by 13,000, I get 1440. That's also this minus this, right? Okay, so there are my per unit amounts. Now, my first question I say is, what are the per unit amounts for sales, variable costs, and contribution margin? Well, I just did them right here, and that's, I think, the best place to put them, okay? Okay, what is the contribution margin per unit? It's right there, isn't it? And that's a very, very important number, okay? What's the CM ratio? Well, I take 1440 divided by 80, uh, and what does that equal? Is it 18%? Yeah. Even? Okay. Uh -huh. I could have also achieved that by taking this divided by this, right? Would have got the same number. Okay. Okay, recast the information above for Lorenzo at an activity level of 30,000 or of 20,000 units sold. Do it in proper form. What do I mean by proper form? Well, I'll show you here in a second. Sales minus variable costs equals CM, contribution margin, minus your fixed equals net income. Correct? Uh, let's do that for total and per unit. Okay. And we are doing this at 20,000 units, is that correct? Now, our per units are the same as above, which was 80 
6560 and 1440, right? So now we just take each one of these numbers tw times 20,000 to get these amounts right here. And I believe that equals 1.6 million, is that correct? Is that right? Okay. Um, this equals 1,312,000. One, and that times that or that minus that equals uh, 288,000. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Our fixed costs remain the same at 124. That minus that equals what? Okay. Now when I say in proper form, what I mean is make sure you, you do it like this. Have that, have your per units over here. Okay, it looks all nice. You with me? Okay. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing at an activity level of 8,000 units sold. So once again, we have sales minus our variable costs equals CM minus our fixed um, costs equals net income. Okay, thank you. And let's do that for total at 8,000 units. And let's put our per units here, those have not changed. 80, 65, 60, and 1440. Okay, now we take these three numbers times that number to get these three numbers, and I believe that equals 640,000. Um, 524,800. And 115,200. Uh, Is this checking out with anybody? Yep. Okay. Fixed costs remain the same at 124,000. Here we have a negative bottom line, right? So that is it. Cool? Any questions on the Lorenzo Company handout? Okay. Something like this sheet should be somewhat easy at this point. So I want to make sure you're not getting behind. Okay? All right. If there's no questions on that, then let's take a look at the shaded box handout. Okay? Now, each one of these cases I wanted you to do independently and um, just to solve for these, okay? Okay, let's do company A. Okay, that minus that equals 57,600. Well, this minus something equals 46,220, so this has to equal 11,380. Is that right? And then I could take any one of these numbers divided by its per unit amount, and I would get the number of units sold at 3,200. Is that correct? Okay, let's look at company B. Okay, this minus this equals a bottom line that's negative of 1,550. Um, something minus that equals that, so sales would equal 82,950, right? Now I take each one of these three numbers, divide by 1975, and I think that's 42 there, 20, and 22. Is that correct? Yes. All right. <coughs> Company C. All right. Now here I have my per units and my number of units sold. Okay. So if I take these three amounts times that, I can get my total amounts which equals 335175. And that equals 215250. And the, this equals 119925. Is that correct? And then this minus this equals 32125. Is that cool? Okay. Last one, company D. Okay. Um, well, let's take a look here. First of all, this minus something equals 17. 
So this must be 160,000, right? Okay. Uh, the CM ratio is 25%, right? So that means variable costs are 75% of sales. Is that right? Does that make sense? If this number is 25% of that number, then this number is 75% of that number. Okay? So let's just do a little algebra here. Um, 0.75 times sales, which is, say, is S, equals 45. So 45 divided by 0.75 equals our sales, which equals what? 60. Cool. 60 minus 45 is 15. Um, okay, this divided by this we can get for the number of units sold, which I think equals 11,800. Is that right? Yep. And now we can take this amount times these two amounts to get seven hundred and eight thousand dollars and five hundred and thirty one thousand dollars does that minus that equal that yep. yes see it's like a little puzzle right you could you could do these do these on a date with your with your, with your sweetie right wouldn't that be a fun way to spend a day just do accounting puzzles okay all right so questions on that if in doubt always start writing down what you know what you know and you'd be surprised how much times how many times you can just solve the rest of it cool all right that was it for the homework wasn't it okay yeah. any questions okay now let's uh, let's move on to the next subject okay um, what I want to talk about now is break even analysis. Break-even analysis is when we we want to know what is that unique sales level either in units of product or sales dollars where we don't earn a profit nor a loss where our bottom line is zero. Okay? That is our break-even point where our bottom line is zero. Now we know that if we sell above our break-even point, we will have a profit, and if we sell below it, it will be a loss, right? But I think I used the example of the coffee shop. If I own a coffee shop, how many cups of coffee do I have to sell to at least break even? Okay, so I'm not losing money. Okay, now, the formulas for break-even, computing break-even, are uh, the break-even point in units is derived by taking your fixed costs divided by your contribution margin per unit. Okay. Your break-even point in sales dollars is computed by taking your fixed costs divided by your contribution margin ratio. All right. Now, I like to sometimes rewrite these as uh, the following, going over to the document camera, okay, is to say my um, break even, my break even in units equals fixed costs divided by CM per unit, okay. And my, zoom out here a little bit, uh, my break even in sales dollars equals fixed costs per CM ratio. Okay, that's how we compute break even. All right? So, Let's take a look at this uh, back at the computer. If Tippin's company sells product XYZ at $25 per unit and fixed costs are $200,000 and variable costs are seventeen dollars per unit, how many units must be sold to break even? Well, the first thing we do is we figure out that our contribution margin per unit, right? Uh, which is $8, $25 minus 17. 
Then to figure out our break even in units, we take our fixed costs of 200,000 divided by that CM per unit of $8 per unit, and that equals 25,000 units. So, if we sell 25,000 units, what is our bottom line? What is it? If we sell 25,000 units, our bottom line is zero. That is correct. Okay? So if we sell 25,001 units, we will have a profit. If we sell 24,999 units, we have a little loss, don't we? Okay? All right. Now, use the contribution margin ratio formula to determine the amount of sales revenue that Tippins must have to break even. Okay, all information before remains unchanged. Fixed costs are 200,000. Unit sales price is 25 and unit variable cost is 17. Well, our CM per unit is $8. Thus, our CM ratio is 8 divided by $25 equals 32%. So our break even in sales dollars equals 200,000 divided by 32% equals $625,000. You with me? Now, what we could have also done to check that was simply to take the number of units to break even, which is 25,000, times $25 per unit, okay, which is the sales price. Does that make sense? Sometimes I will do that to double check it. If that's how many units we have to sell to break even, we'll just take 25,000 units times the sales price per unit of $25, and by golly, you do get 620. 5,000. Okay? All right? Make sense? So yeah. What, so what, so what, <clears throat> what does that mean at 625,000? What's, what's happening then? What that means is if you have sales of 625,000, your bottom line will be zero. zero. As a matter of fact, that's what I want to do right now. Using this information we just solved, let's take a moment and use the above data and I want you to prepare a contribution margin income statement for Tiffins at the break-even level. Okay? So we're recasting this contribution margin income statement at the break-even unit level, which we have just solved for. Does that make sense? Okay? So let's play that music for a couple minutes, and you folks at home do this as well. Let's go ahead and recast Tiffins at the break-even level.
Okay, let's go ahead and solve that. Um, going over to the document camera. Sales minus variable costs equals contribution margin minus fixed costs equals net income. Is that correct? Now, we're going to do this for a total and then, of course, we're going to have our per units over here, right? Well, we know our per units. They are uh, $25, uh, $17, and $8. Is that correct? Okay. And what is the break-even level that we sold for? How many units? How much? 25,000. 25,000 units. Okay, so now let's take these amounts times 25,000 units. What's 25 times 25,000? 625,000. It's 625,000, which we did solve for right there too, right? Okay, so this is $625,000. 17 times 25,000 is what? $125,000. $425,000. Six twenty-five minus four twenty-five is two hundred thousand. Is that correct? Yeah. Which is also eight times twenty-five thousand. Uh, what are our fixed costs? Two hundred thousand. So by golly, by gum, what is that bottom line? Zero. Okay. So that is at the break-even level. Make sense? Cool. All right. What I want to do now? Any questions on that? What I want to do now? is uh, work on a few more in class. I want to work on Quick Study 21.6 and Quick Study 21.8. Okay? Quick Study 21.6 and Quick Study 21.8. Uh, we'll do those in class again while they play this music. And then we will go over the answers. And uh, then maybe I'll let you go a little early today because I know last time I kept you a little long. So, Quick Study 21.6, Quick Study 21.8. I'll put those uh, up on the screen as well from the textbook so you can see them if you don't have your textbook.
right. I won't read it to you since you just read it, but let's take a look at the answers on the screen here. Uh, it's pretty, pretty doggone self-explanatory. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? Right? Now, you should be a pro at, con at uh, calculating CM per unit and contribution margin ratio at this point. Um, but there are your answers. And, of course, I always like to double check this answer by taking my number of units needed to sell to break even times my sales price of 90. 90 times 3,000, does that equal 270,000? Okay, that's a good way to double check it. Okay, so did everybody get those answers on 21.6 and 21.8? Okay, are we good? All right, let's go ahead and call it a day. I know I've been giving you a lot of uh, information, so. Uh, I want to slow down a, a little bit from what I did last lecture. Um, the homework that I would like you to do is exercise 21.5, 21.10, 21.11, 21.12, and also do problem 21-2B, okay? So make sure you do that. It's very important that you do your homework. All right, any, any, anything else? All right, remember to do your chapter 20 mini project if you haven't already and we will see you later guys bye bye